<laughs> All right, so this is um, the next lesson in naming. So yesterday we named ionic compounds, just the bare minimum, the most basic version, just the name of the positive ion plus the name of the negative ions, and you're done. So today we're going to amp up the uh, difficulty here and talk about multivalent metals, okay, and then later polyatomic ions. So first of all, what are multivalent metals and polyatomic ions? Uh, first of all, they're also ionic. Okay, so today's lesson is still all about ionic compounds. So iron is one example of a multivalent metal. And these metals are usually found in the middle um, that giant block in the middle of the periodic table called the transition metals. Um, iron is one of those. And iron can make a compound with chlorine called iron chloride. Okay, we learned how to name that from yesterday. But there are two different iron chlorides. They have different color. They have different properties. They're both iron chloride. So what gives? Well, it turns out that iron can make two not one ion, just um, two ions. Sodium can only make one, like one plus. Sodium gives away one electron. That's pretty much it. Okay. Iron, however, it can either give away two electrons or give away three electrons. So two ion, two plus, and three plus. Okay, by the way, the symbol for iron is Fe. So Fe2 plus versus Fe3 plus. Now, they're both iron, but there's a difference. If the Fe2 plus reacts with chlorine, that will be FeCl2, because you will need two chlorines for one iron. If it's the Fe3 plus, then you will need three chlorines. Okay, but you can't just call it iron chloride, because you're not being very specific. Which iron chloride are you talking about if you have two students of the same name if i say their name they're not going to know who i'm talking to so you have to have something extra to distinguish between the two different iron chlorides okay the iron two plus versus the iron three plus so if you look on the periodic table and you find iron you can see on the top right corner you have a two plus and a three plus. Okay, so some ions, you know, some metals can have more than one charge, not all of them. And you do not have to memorize which ones because you always have a periodic table with you. But you do need to be wary that some of them do have it. Make sure you check if you're not sure. And also on the periodic table, the more common ion is placed on top. So three plus is more common than two plus. That is why three plus is higher on that table than two plus, but iron makes both. There are many of these uh, multivalent metals and iron is just one of those examples, okay? I have here four different examples. Again, these are four of many examples. How do we distinguish between the different ions? Well, we use Roman numerals, okay? Roman numerals are I, double I, triple I, I, V, V, one, two, three, four, five. Those numbers, I, I'm sure most of you have seen before in real life, uh, probably on a clock or something, I don't know. But these aren't used very often. Okay, uh, but in naming, we do use Roman numerals. You have to use Roman numerals to indicate which ion is present. So, for instance, iron, Fe, that's the symbol, there, it has two charges, 2 plus and 3 plus. So, the name of those ions are just simply iron 2, okay, iron bracket, double I, and for iron 3 plus is iron 3, iron bracket, triple I. It's that simple, iron two, iron three, okay? Copper, the symbol is Cu. The charge for copper, well, copper has two different charges, one plus or two plus, so therefore copper one versus copper two, okay? Tin is Sn. 
tin two, tin four, and then lead is PB, so PB two plus, PB four plus, you have lead two or lead four. Okay, that's pretty much it. But if you notice the right column, the right hand column, the Latin root name. Right, so when I was in school, this was taught and it was widely used, but not anymore. Uh, we've since updated it. So we no longer use the Latin root names. I still have them here because if someone is old school, they're going to refer to these using their Latin older names. And some bottles you can find in the lab, they actually label it using the Latin root name. It's not awfully complicated to learn, so I just have it right here. Um, if you're ever wondering, iron, why is it Fe? Because in Latin, iron is ferrum. Okay, copper is cuprum, tin is stenum, and then lead is plumbum. So get a plumber. Yeah. So these are where the words come from. And if you look, the Latin root names for iron two is ferrous. Iron three is ferric. Copper one is cuprous. Copper two is cupric. Okay. Stanis, stanic. Plumbus, plumbic. Okay. If you are the smaller charge, like two plus instead of three plus, one plus instead of two plus, you are designated the OUS, the ferrous, the cuprus, stannus, plumbus. Okay, and if you're the higher charge, three versus two, or two versus one, four versus two, so you're bigger than the other charge, you're designated the IC, the ferric, the cupric, the stannic, the plumbic. Okay, so ic is for bigger valence, while us is for the smaller valence. And that's how you would use the Latin root names to denote the ions. Okay, again, I stress that we don't do that anymore. For you, you just have to know the normal names using the Roman numerals, and that's a lot simpler because you don't have to then memorize these. Just literally count. Well, two plus, okay, two. Three plus, all right, you have three. Okay, does that make sense? Let's look at some examples here. MnO2. First of all, we are not dealing with magnesium. Mn is not magnesium. Okay, Mn is manganese. So you need to find manganese on the periodic table. And it's somewhere in the middle. And then look at the charge. Okay, so manganese is Mn. O is oxygen. But remember, we have to change the ending to oxide because it's the negative ion so manganese oxide not so fast okay, because where well, oxygen only has a two minus manganese it could be two plus it could be three plus it could be four plus okay we need to figure out which one uh, how do we figure out which one what is the charge of this manganese in this compound can somebody tell me Well, you guys can't tell? Maybe um, do a little math here. Remember what we learned yesterday? The compounds must be neutral. If you have MnO2, okay, so I'm getting answers now. So yes, it's the four plus. It's four, okay? Here's how you figure out why. For those that didn't understand why this is four, Here's what you have, MnO2. Mn, I'm going to use X because I don't know what the charge is. Mn, X plus. What is X? We're solving for X just like math class. Oxygen is 2 minus. That has to be 2 minus. You have no choice there. But you have two oxygens. Okay, if you combine the two oxygens, that would be a 4 minus in total. Okay, 2 minus plus 2 minus is 4 minus. And they must match the positive charge. So in order to for this to be zero, you must have an, an four plus in order to balance the four minus from the oxygen. Therefore, manganese in this compound must be a four plus. Okay, so this is a little mental math that you have to do to figure out which charge do we have. And you pick the correct one. 
and four is IV in Roman numerals. So let's get ready to put this together. So you have manganese four oxide. Okay, you must have the four. If you have manganese oxide, you're not being very specific. I don't know which manganese you're referring to. So please make sure that for all multivalent metals, use the Roman numerals. But also, when students learn about multivalent metals, they're like, cool, no problem, I got this. And then they use Roman numerals for everybody. No, you only use Roman numerals if the metal is multivalent. If it's not multivalent, you don't use Roman numerals. You see what I mean? You only use it because you don't know which one. If you have sodium, which is one plus, only one plus, you don't, you don't say sodium one. Okay, that's not necessary because I know it's sodium. Okay, does that make sense? So sodium, you don't need Roman numerals for that. In fact, if you put Roman numerals, I will mark it wrong. You can only use this, and you have to use this only if the metal is multivalent. If it's not, do not use Roman numerals. That's the hard part. Sometimes you use it, sometimes you don't. So then you have to know whether the metal is multivalent. You don't have to memorize, check on the periodic table. If you're not sure, check every time. All right, so here's the table for you to complete. I'm, I'll give you a few minutes. I'm telling you right now, all of these are multivalent. Okay, we're just practicing multivalent right now. Write the compound name or the formula. If you want to, do the Latin root names if you can. Okay. You don't have to know the Latin root names for this course, but you know, for your own curiosity, you can do it if you like. I'll give you around like what, three minutes, and I'll take this up shortly. Yeah, when you're done, please um, type it into the chat. Did you guys uh, finish this? Oh, really? No one's giving me an answer so far? This is harder than I thought it is.
All right, I'm going to go ahead and take this up, despite not having any answers. Maybe you guys are just confused. First of all, you would have to find these elements on the periodic table, and that might take a while. So I'm, I'm guessing that you're having trouble finding these. Okay, I'm having answers now. Um, for the first one, you have Cu, that is copper. Cl is chlorine. So copper chloride, but it's copper two chloride. Uh, for every two chlorines, you have one copper, and chlorine is negative one, so that means copper must be plus two. Okay, and for the Latin name, uh, copper being the two plus, that is bigger than the one plus, so this is the higher uh, charge, so it's cupric chloride for the Latin. Second one is tin. Tin is SN on the periodic table. Tin 4 sulfide. So that means 4 plus. Sulfide is 2 minus. So you need two of them to balance the 4 plus. So it's SNS2. Being the 4 plus, that's the higher power. So stenic sulfide. Notice that I spelled sulfide with a PH. Um, that is the older way of spelling sulfur. Um, sulfur usually is spelled with F, but in the past uh, it's, it was spelled with PH. It doesn't matter which one, they're both correct. So this is the one of the only instances where you have a choice in spelling here. You want to be old school, go with the PH. You want to be modern and updated, go with the F. They're both okay. Uh, you have mercurous phosphide. Uh, mercurous, O-U-S, means the smaller of the two. So it's mercury one, so HG3P, phosphide being the three, that means mercury, you need three of them. So mercury one, phosphide. For phosphorus, you have a pH as well. It has to be a pH, okay? Do not spell phosphorus or phosphide with an F. It has to be pH, okay? So I got another answer here. All right, that looks pretty good. Last one, um, MNI4, uh, that's manganese, that is not magnesium. I4, I is, well, one minus, you need, you need four of those, so manganese four, iodide. And the Latin root name, you don't have one, okay? Manganese doesn't really have a Latin root name. Uh, well, that's because it has three valences. So ick and us applies to if you only have two. So if you have three, then it just doesn't work. So don't worry about the Latin root names. They're just there for your own entertainment, your own extra knowledge. But you do need to know how to name these using the Roman numerals. Okay, so do we have any questions? Okay, yeah, there, there was a few mistakes. We're good with... Multivalent metals. Okay. Use Roman numerals to denote the charge. Okay, so moving on to something a lot more annoying, in my opinion, than multivalent metals, and that would be polyatomic ions. First of all, let's dissect the word. Poly means many, okay, like a polygon, a polynomial, or I can't think of another word with poly. A polymer. Like the, that, never mind. Polyatomic means it has many atoms. All right. So a polyatomic ion is therefore an ion with a charge made up of more than one atom. And they act like one single particle. And those polyatomic ions, they typically don't break apart. They come in a package. You see what I mean? It's like one person with his or her posse. They have their own group. They show up to a party together. They leave the party together. Polyatomic ions are like that. And there's one example, PO4, phosphorus with four oxygen. They just hang out. They stick together. And in total, they have an overall charge of three minus. Okay, so imagine them as one large ion. There are many polyatomic ions. There are so many that I'm not going to list them all because it wouldn't fit on this page. So I picked a few that are more common than the rest of them. So 
the names are on the left, the chemical formulas are in the second column, and they're charged. So you would have to memorize these. You have to memorize the names, memorize the formula, and memorize the charge if you're in school during my period. Okay, I had to memorize these straight up. I wasn't given any cheat sheet on the test. If you don't know what phosphate is, well, that's too bad, isn't it? For you guys, you don't have to memorize these. There is a formula sheet, if you will. There is a sheet of polyatomic ions on Google Classroom. Download that. Use that for your test. Okay, so the education system is trending towards less memorizing and here have a have a cheat sheet kind of thing i wish I, I i was on that train but you know i'm i'm glad i memorized these because you probably also want to memorize these despite the fact that i said you don't have to okay if you do enough practice they just stick to your head anyway you don't have to try to memorize them it, you just will okay but if, if you have issues you don't know what carbonate is. That that tells me you didn't do a lot of homework. You didn't do a lot of practice questions. In the end, they should all become more familiar. Okay, and also, of course, on the test, if you see calcium carbonate, and I ask you what is the formula, if you don't know what carbonate is, you might think it's an element on the periodic table. You're going to look for it. You're not going to find it because carbonate is CO3. It's not an element, it's a polyatomic ion. Of course, you can find it if you just look on the polyatomic ion sheet, but you have to recognize that this is a polyatomic ion so that you will look for it there, you see? So your job is to really recognize that these guys are polyatomic ions. You don't necessarily have to memorize that these are polyatomic ions, okay? so. It's easier to recognize than to memorize, but you do need to be very familiar with these, their names, their formula, and their charge. Okay, a lot of these can be very confusing, like hydroxide, don't confuse that with hydrogen, not the same thing. Okay, nitrate is not nitride. So let's do some examples with polyatomic ions. So I see in the chat, oh yeah, you had to memorize these two. Yeah, it depends on where you are in the world. I feel like, if you're from Asia in general, the education system there has no chill. You pretty much have to memorize these. And even yes, some places in Europe, I guess, is a little different, but North America, I'm not saying our education system is bad. It's just more lax. It's less rigorous than the Asian ones. Uh, but the opposite is true for universities. The Asian universities are pretty simple. Once you get in, you, you've been through the trial that was high school, so you're in university, you get to party. Here's different. Like high school is pretty chill. Things are easier compared to the rest of the world. University is where things start to go downhill and your house is on fire. So, yeah, opposite systems. So let's do some examples. First one, K3PO4. Okay, don't panic if you see something big like that. The biggest mistake that I see is people just simply name all of them, potassium phosphorus oxide. No. Okay, just because you have potassium phosphorus and oxygen doesn't mean it's potassium phosphorus oxide. No, -uh. you have to recognize that K is potassium and PO4 is a polyatomic ion called phosphate. How do you know? Look on the sheet that has it. Please use your sheet. And then you just put them together, you're done. Potassium phosphate. That's all you have to do. You don't have to tell me that there are three potassiums because the charge will make me realize that it is three potassiums. You, know, you don't have to tell me because phosphate is three minus. Of course you need three one pluses, okay? The next one. Oh dear, NaHCO3, there are so many things in here. Na is sodium, H is hydrogen, C is carbon, O is oxygen. So here's the name, sodium, hydrogen, carbon oxide. Again, wrong. You can't just name all of the elements. You have to realize Na is sodium, 
this whole thing, the rest of it, HCO3 is one polyatomic ion. Whoops, I forgot about that. Let me just go back. I apologize. Um, potassium phosphate is the name. But a big mistake that I often see is that students confuse phosphate with phosphide. Okay, the spelling is different. It's similar, but the last three letters are different. Phosphate is PO4, 3 minus, that's a polyatomic ion. Phosphide, that's just phosphorus. You change the ending to IDE. Okay, please make sure you recognize the difference between them. It's a subtle difference, but it's a key difference. Okay, so okay, let's move on to the next one. So sodium, the HNO3 is a polyatomic ion called bicarbonate or hydrogen carbonate. So therefore, the name would be sodium bicarbonate. That's baking soda. That's the thing you have in your kitchen. You, you bake with it. Okay, in, in that orange box container, that's basically what this compound is. That's the chemical formula, and that is its name. Okay. Also, uh, bicarbonate is the shorter version of this. If you like, you can call it sodium hydrogen carbonate. That's also correct. But I don't, I don't know why you would want to do that. You have to write an extra word, hydrogen, instead of just writing bi, which is a lot shorter. So sodium bicarbonate. Make sure you know what uh, bicarbonate is. It's one of those more common ions. Okay. So the trick is recognize the polyatomic ion. Look for it in the a table, copy the name down. If you don't recognize it, you won't do it correctly. All right, so let's do a few more. Ammonium sulfate. I'm going to have you guys look for that. Um, figure out the name of this and then write the chemical formula. I want to see whether if someone can get it right without me going through it. So I'll give you like a minute and then I'll take this up. So be very careful what you write down. There are many tricks hidden in here. Ammonium sulfate. Okay, timer got it. That is correct. There are a couple of tricks in here, and well, apparently he didn't fall for them. One of the biggest downfalls every time ammonium comes up is people think it's aluminum because it starts with the letter A, it ends with I U M. So, aluminum, right? No, ammonium, read it carefully. Please, you scan the word for every letter and then you find it. Okay, if you have difficulty reading, like if you have dyslexia, this is gonna suck for you, but I'm sorry. Um, there's no accommodation for this because that's literally what you're learning. You're learning how to spell these things. Ammonium is NH4 plus, okay? That's a polyatomic ion. Sulfate is another polyatomic ion. So th this is two polyatomic ions. Yeah, I have another answer here. Oh, you did the next one. Uh, let's finish this one first. Ammonium combined with sulfate. Sulfate is two minus. Ammonium is one plus. So you would just put them together. 
you need to balance this because ammonium is one plus, sulfate is two minus. You got to put a two. If you put a two, then you double the positive, and now it's two plus, two minus, and you're done. You absolutely have to have the brackets. Okay? If you don't have the brackets, guess what you have? NH42 SO4. You're telling me that there's there are 42 hydrogens in here. No, you must have the brackets. And the brackets must cover both N and H. Okay, I, I keep stressing that. Please don't forget the brackets. I, I say the same thing in math class over and over and over again. People forget the brackets. They do the bed math wrong. Same idea here. If you don't have the bracket, it is one nitrogen, 42 hydrogens. If you have the bracket, that would be two nitrogens and eight hydrogens, so two molecules of NH4. Okay, so bracket NH4, two, SO4. That would be the formula. And the next one, I see some people already did it. Um, yeah, that's correct. Calcium is just calcium, CA. Hydroxide is not H, it's OH. Oh, I forgot about this again, of course. Yeah, let me just go back. Sulfate, that's another common mistake. So fate is SO4, two minus. So fide with the IDE, that's just sulfur. You change the ending to IDE. So S, okay, again, that's the difference. So fate, so fide, three letter difference, but that's a huge difference. If some people just call sulfate, uh, if you see sulfate, put an S, that's wrong, that's sulfide. Please make sure you don't get these two mixed up. That's, again, a common mistake that I keep noticing every year. And then the next one, calcium hydroxide. Calcium is CA. Okay, that's on the periodic table. Hydroxide would be a polyatomic ion. It's, on, it's, it's in the list somewhere. It's OH with the negative one. So you will put them together. They're... Uh, there's one calcium, two plus. So that means you will need two OHs to make two minus because each OH is just one minus. So calcium, two plus, OH, one minus, the bracket, two. You must have the brackets. If you don't have the brackets, it's CA, one oxygen, two hydrogen. The math doesn't add up. You need two OHs. Okay, does that make sense? So please make sure you always have brackets around the polyatomic ion if you're going to slap on a number to change its amount. If you only have one polyatomic ion, like the sulfate in the previous question, yeah, sure, you don't need brackets or anything. But if you have more than one, you need to put brackets around it and then you denote the number using a subscript. Okay, I hope this is clear. Do we have any questions on how to name polyatomic ions? Okay. Here's another one. This time we are going to combine multivalent metals with polyatomic ions. So combining what we learned so far and putting it into one big question. So Fe bracket, NO2, close bracket, three. Okay, everything in there is necessary. You need the open and the closed brackets. We need to figure out the name of the thing. Okay, so Fe we know is iron. And then NO2, look again on your table. It is not nitrate, that's NO3. This is nitrite. I know one letter difference that changes everything just nitrate versus nitrite yeah this is a nightmare for students that hate spelling okay in english class i guess spelling doesn't really matter all that much if you spell it wrong the english teacher still knows what you're trying to say in fact for my class it doesn't matter if you're trying to write a word answer you spell something wrong, I overlook the spelling, I give you the marks. Anyway, I mark the content, not the spelling. For science and math, you can't write names wrong. Nitrite is not the same as nitrate. If you spell that wrong, you get it wrong entirely. I'm not taking marks off of spelling. 
I'm taking marks off of your inability to name, and that is the knowledge I'm testing. So please, you have to spell, spell this correctly. You must notice the spelling difference as well. So NO2 is nitrite. NO3 is nitrate. So this is nitrite, NO2. You have three nitrites, NO2, NO2, NO2. That is a total of negative three. And you have one iron. And remember, iron can be two plus or three plus. So therefore, having three NL2s, you must have three plus. Okay, you have to balance the nitrates, the negative three with a three plus. So you have iron three plus. So you have to use the Roman numerals for three, put everything together. Iron three nitrite. Okay, does that make any sense? No questions. This, this is good. If you find this straightforward, this makes sense. Okay, good. But I, I think you might still make mistakes on the test. Um, learning these individually, one, uh, one thing per lesson, okay, that's kind of simple, but if I give you a worksheet with everything mixed together, some of them are polyatomic, some of them are not. Some of them are multivalent, some of them are not. Then it's confusing because you have to decide, is that multivalent, is that polyatomic, and then finally answer the the question so it does get really confusing when everything is put together but first your, your job today is to understand multivalent metals and polyatomic ions okay so we're nearing the end here here's another cool one um if you watch breaking bad it's it's a chemistry show there's a lot of chemistry in there and one of the first a uh, cool chemistry uh, that was this, this depicted in the show was this thing, this compound. Uh, they called it fulminated mercury on the show. The proper name is mercury to fulminate. Now, that's basically what happened. So this dude, um, he, he's making drugs, and he goes to this, I don't know, a, a, a boss of some kind, like on the street, like a mob boss. He demands his money back, so he brings that. That looked like meth. It's actually not meth. It's mercury fulminate. So he throws it. This is so, yeah, Tuco. That's his name. Yeah, I, I, I keep calling the dude Tico. Uh, Tico is a squirrel, I think, uh, in Dora the Explorer. Um, yeah, Tuco is the mob boss is his name. Yeah, so he goes to Tuco. I want my money back. And he, he, he takes what looks like meth. That's what Tuco is buying. In fact, it's an explosive. Uh, mercury fulminate is extremely explosive. Any any shock, any pressure to it will make it explode. So he throws it and he blows up his office and he just basically picks up what he wants and walks out like, like a champ. That actually does happen with mercury fulminate. That's accurate, except uh, that mercury fulminate it's not a crystal. It doesn't look like meth at all. It's just powdery. So I guess the show, well, he called it fulminated mercury with a tint of magic or something along that line. That means he, he did something to it to make it look like crystal meth. Anyway, you can name that. Um, this is a polyatomic ion, fulminate. Okay, mercury is a multivalent metal. Mercury 2 fulminate is his actual name. Notice in the show, they don't say that because it's not necessary. It's not a science class. So they, they just try to use their common name. So that's the formula for Mercury 2 fulminate. So HG bracket CNO is fulminate. And it is 1 minus. Since it's Mercury 2, you need two of them. Okay. Does that make sense? There's another common mistake. Look at the name, mercury to fulminate. So the chemical formula, students are really enticed to write HG 
two with a little number two and then CNO. Okay, that would be wrong. That two, that Roman numeral two is not telling you that there are two mercury atoms. It is telling you that this mercury atom has a charge of two plus. So you're not supposed to slap a two on the mercury. Okay, this tells you mercury is two plus, and because it's two plus, there's a two on the CNO because CNO is one minus. Okay, so please know that that the Roman numeral is not telling you how many atoms, it's telling you about the charge. All right, so do we have any questions so far? I think we're almost done here. All right, so I have one more practice. I'll give you a few minutes. Use your periodic table. Use that table of polyatomic ions I posted on Google Classroom. Fill this out, and I'll take it up, and then we're done. All right, guys, so good luck. All right, unfortunately, I can't see your progress and I can't see how you're doing. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm gonna start taking this up. And after that, I'll take up the homework from yesterday. And if you're ever stuck on something, um, know that it, the answer is in the periodic table somewhere. Okay, you can always find the element or find it in the polyatomic ion uh, table. So you just have to basically, it's like a puzzle. You got to piece it together. You got to find the answer for the first part, find the answer for the second part, and just put it together. Okay, so I'm going to start from the top. Um, BASO4, BA is barium. SO4 is sulfate. That's the polyatomic ion sulfate. So there's barium sulfate. Okay, done. The next one is CRNO3 with a bracket 3. 
CR is chromium, and chromium is multivalent. It has more than one possible charge. Um, nitrate is NO3. Nitrate is one minus. So because you have three of them, that must be chromium three nitrate. Okay, if you forget the three, you will lose marks. Okay, barium doesn't need a two. Barium has a charge of two plus and only two plus. So you have no choice with barium, so you don't write the two. But chromium, I forget what the other chart, I think it's two plus and three plus. So you have to tell me which one. So chromium three nitrate, okay? The next one is just awful. Oh, look at that. NH4, bracket two, CR2, O7. Okay, that looks extremely complicated and intimidating, but just know that for, for naming, you're going to have two things. You're going to have a positive charge and a negative charge. That's it. So those disgusting looking uh, letters, that's actually two different polyatomic ions. The first one is NH4, the ammonium. The second one, altogether, Cr2O7, that is dichromate. So ammonium dichromate. Okay, Cr2O7 is one big thing, and that's kind of hard to spot if you're just starting out. So I suggest you go through the polyatomic ions table just to familiarize yourself with what they look like. Okay, next one, sodium cyanide, uh, that is that is a poison that people use to assassinate people with. Sodium is Na, cyanide is a polyatomic ion, uh, Cn, so NaCn, cyanide is one minus, sodium is one plus, and that's all you need. Ooh, I have an answer. Uh, I... Yeah, there's a mistake in there. And um, I'll, I'll show you which one. Okay, next one, potassium permanganate. Okay, potassium is K. Permanganate, you mean, okay, what is permanganate? Look in the polyatomic ions table. Okay, that is MnO4. So it's K1 plus. Permanganate is 1 minus, so this is KMnO4. Okay, again, I know the hard part is to... Know that permanganate is a polyatomic ion. It is not an element on the periodic table. And I can't teach that. That is just practice. You just got to look at it enough and then you will know. Calcium phosphite. That's a sneaky one. Calcium is Ca. Phosphite is PO3. PO4 is phosphate. Okay, that's, that's the difference right there. Phyte and fate are not the same thing. Okay, so CA3, PO3, bracket 2. You got to balance the charge. Remember what we did yesterday? Calcium is 2 plus, phosphite to 3 minus. You switch the two numbers, so CA3, PO3, 2. And then uh, SN is ClO2, SN is 10. ClO, that's another tough one. ClO is called hypochlorite. Again, something you can look up. And that is negative one. And because you have two of them, just one tin, that is tin two, not tin four. Okay. And the next one, calcium carbonate, calcium is Ca, carbonate is CO3. Moving on, LiHCO3. Li is lithium. HCO3 is hydrogen carbonate. Or if, if you want to do the short one, bicarbonate, lithium bicarbonate. Notice that lithium and calcium, they don't have a two and a one because they're not multivalent. Okay, and the last one, copper two sulfate. Copper is Cu, sulfate is SO4. Copper two, meaning that copper is two plus, but sulfate is two minus, so that's perfect. Two plus, two minus. You don't need to multiply anything. Just put them together. CuSO4. Okay, so that is the complete list of the answers here. Um, if you didn't get it, because I, I know a lot of you didn't finish, then you need a lot of practice. Okay, there's no way around this. This is just practice. If you practice enough, it sticks in your head. If you don't practice enough, 
you're going to draw a blank on the test and it's not going to be great. All right, so basically we learned two things today. Multivalent metals, use Roman numerals, and then polyatomic ions, use the table. Okay, but there's still ionic compounds, so we use the same naming rules for naming ionic compounds for these. Okay, you just have to know that multivalent, pick a Roman numeral to suggest the charge, polyatomic, just find the name, put it together. It's not on the periodic table. All right, so with that said, I'm going to turn off the recording.